God bless you, everybody. And good night to one and all. Another Wednesday night. Uh, and uh, I pray that the, to, this Wednesday finds us all in, in good health. And um, no one is uh, feeling any ailments. Um, and just want to be forever grateful and thankful to the Lord for all that he has done and all that he has enabled us to do. Uh, so without any further ado, we're just going to get into the word for tonight. Uh, it's an interesting little discussion we're going to have because a lot of it is not necessarily pertaining to Bible, but it has a very relevant uh a very relevant association with the world that we are currently on as it relates to our, our topic. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we just want to thank you, Lord God, and we feel not to praise you for all that you have done, for your strength in us, for your mighty power displayed in just keeping us from all evil and, and protecting us and and covering us in your will. So, Lord, we just want to bless you and thank you again for the fellowship that we have currently, just being here on a Wednesday evening, just gathered together to hear your words, to, to go over your words, to learn more of you as we also partake. Use me simply as a vessel. Speak to your people and speak to us so that we will be wiser and we will know just how to operate as we go through this world. We bless you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good night. Uh, we have been on our topic of pray, uh, surviving in an evil world. And I pray that you have been so far enlightened to uh you know just going through this word as i've been trying to go through this word from a step by step perspective and to and just to know uh that uh there is always something that is a nugget for you there's always something that is a nugget that uh, it may be a phrase, one sentence, um, you know, it, it just might be uh, a couple, one of the verses, one of the interpretation of the verses, something is there for you to actually uh, take it and to, to build on it in terms of your own spiritual development. Surviving in, a, in an evil world is going to be important if we're going to realize the things that God has promised us in the earth. So we're not just now living to go to heaven. You know, we're not just here like a cult, sitting down, waiting for the, the glorious appearing. Uh, but we actually have to live. And as we live, we're going to encounter different experiences. We're going to have different circumstances that we have to deal with. We're going to uh, encounter different challenges, both uh, presented to us by the enemy and, and challenges that are also uh, designed to bring us to a better spiritual level and, and, and maturity. So, so it's important that uh, we, we, we get to you know, uh, understand as Peter was advising the church in his day just how to survive. Uh, as usual, we want to do a recap of what we were going on last week. And uh, uh, this session, though, is entitled The Lion's Hunt. The Lion's Hunt. 
and we are actually still on verse 8 of chapter 5, believe it or not. We, this entire session is still devoted to completing uh, the last phrase in uh, that verse. But before we do that, let's just do a recap, a, a quick little recap of what we were doing last week. So our lesson last weekend was entitled Stay Awake. And, and as we broke down each wording, we looked at be sober, which we identified as uh, being mentally self-controlled, sobriety of the mind, which again gives us the idea of, of not being staggering, not being drunken, not being un, un, in balanced, uh, or unbalanced, but having a sort of mindset that says that we are stable and in control mentally. There's nothing the devil likes than a mentally out of control saint. Uh, easy to pray on, easy to get distracted, easy to get perplexed, easy to, to begin to doubt. Uh, so he says, be sober. The next word he used was be vigilant. And we explained that that meant to be awake, be watchful. And, and, and it gave the context of, of just being alert, being not in the mode of, of being asleep. We likened it to, to our Lord and Savior, the keeper of Israel that neither slumbers nor sleeps. So that so he is watchful, he's on guard, so the enemy cannot take him unawares. And the same thing is being implied here by Peter for us to be vis vigilant. And the reason why is because we have an adversary. The adversary we noted as the translation being used of an opponent in a lawsuit. So the, so the opponent we have is basically somebody who is hurling accusations, hurling us into court before a judge and, and doing all sort of uh, libelous uh, accusations against us. Who is this adversary? It is the devil. Namely, the devil, the translation of which is diabolos, which comes from diabolo, which we saw as to throw over or across, meaning he is hurling his accusations at us. He's hurling his malicious intent. He's, he, he, is, he is slandering, trying to uh, bring all sort of accusations against us. Why is he bringing accusations? Because he is trying to... to, to make us invaluable in the eyes of God. He's trying to make us um, not credible in the eyes of God. He's trying to present a case before Almighty God, just like he tried for Job, that we do not serve God simply because we love him or simply because we are uh, worshippers. But we are either serving God for some sort of material benefit or we are serving him uh, in order to, to have some sort of, of advantage. It is not out of our own volition. So he's hurling accusation and he also is hurling things about us that are also true. Remember, we said that the devil's operating in a sense where he's not only trying to present lies but he's also using the truth about us and manipulating it in a way that becomes a negative so it's an insidious sort of an attack where it's gradual subtle but has harmful effects so we are told to stay awake because the devil has a roaring lion Roaring, the Greek of uh, speaks of a howl of a beast in fierce hunger. 
So the roaring now is descriptive of the attitude of the enemy, the attitude of the devil as it relates to his temperament. He is hungry to kill. And uh, we said that this, this roaring uh, appetite for the saints uh, by the devil, uh, the adversary, he is walking about. Remember, we, 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 we looked at the term walking about and we, we, we got from the Greek, which means to tread all around. And I gave that example of when the, uh, he came before the before the Lord, when the elders, had, the the angels, had the, you know the heavenly hosts had presented themselves, and uh, the Lord asked the devil, "From whence cometh thou?" And he says, "From walking up and down and to and fro." And the only reason why he's doing that is because he is seeking whom he may devour. He is looking for the next opportunity. And that's where we are going to uh, be looking tonight at that last phrase. Be so be of a sober mind. This is the Wies translation now. Be of a sober mind. Be watchful. Your adversary who is a slanderer, namely the devil, as a lion roaring in fierce hunger, is constantly walking about, busybody. Do you remember a scripture in that, that talks about the busybody? Busy body? We were warned not to be busybodies in other men's matters. And, and, and you can understand where that temperament, where that statement is coming from. Because it is seen as a it is seen as a evil nature to be a busybody because that's the nature of the devil. He is a busybody trying to interfere in you, your, your situation and mine and in the world situation. And, and this is why, uh, you know, the saints have been warned about those people who uh, they constantly want to come to your house. Uh, they constantly want to uh, to come to have conversations. Constantly trying to uh, you know get into the mood of of just just talking and talking. And sometimes the talking leads into places that are unnecessary. And so it's like uh, this constant constant uh, instead of. Use it, utilizing that time to perhaps be guarding your heart and guarding your mind. Uh, the busybody is all about other people's business. We have, uh, we don't have time to be uh, flourishing our mind in other people's business. Our, our business alone is so detrimental as it relates to our soul, our spirit, our environment, our family, our well-being, that we have to be careful and, and not to entertain busybodies. Because that is uh, synonymous with the, 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 the actions uh, of the devil. Uh, very synonymous with the actions of the devil because he's always seeking someone to devour. The word seeking there, it means to plot. You know, if, uh, and when used in a bad sense, it's, it's to plot, which means that the, the enemy isn't simply just just walking around and then he sees you and he starts to attack. There is a nature to the plot. There is a strategy to the plot. I, I, I dare to say that if we're not careful, the enemy knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows our routine even more than we know, know it ourselves. The enemy knows when you're when you get up. The enemy knows when you're walking out. The enemy knows when you get to work. The enemy knows when you're at lunch. 
because he is always plotting a strategy and looking for an opportunity to strike. So, so the one of the one of the and I found is very interesting. One of the the the, the, the things that uh, I, I believe the Lord has utilized for us uh, to, uh, you know, to, 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 to understand how the enemy works is actually the behavior of lions. And it's an important thing for us just to take a note of. So what we're going to do for the, for the next, the, the, the rest of this session really is is to kind of take a look at how lions operate and we're going to find some very interesting uh personalities that the lion has in terms of how it operates in the jungle and the the, the similarities between that and how the enemy operates or 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 to or to be more distinct how the devil operates so 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 it's the lion's hunt and one of the first things about a lion that is 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 noteworthy is that lions are ambush predators ambush predators so so unlike many other uh, animals in the jungle, you know, like the hyenas and and uh, you know those wild dogs and so on that that, that are resident in in the jungle, where th they they will see their prey and and they don't matter if the prey sees them or not. Once they see a prey and they have decided I'm I'm zoning in on you, they just start running at the at the prey, and the prey either has as it's flight or fight, flight or fight. Uh, but lions, on the other hand, are what is known, uh, they, they, they have what is known, they are what is known as ambush predators. They lie in wait at spots where prey are most likely to pass. Thus lions are inherently more patient than other species. The lion will lie in wait for the prey. And so he, he is going to always be observant of, of where that prey uh, usually, uh, the usual spots. Where, do, where, where does the prey hang out? Where, where, where are they going to drink water? Uh, we are they passing uh, at a particular point in the afternoon or in the evening or in the night? Where where are they? And and so the lion is waiting in ambush and is more patient than other species. Be understand that the devil is very patient. The devil is very patient and he will uh, and some sometimes we wonder uh that you know we, we see folks uh, unfortunately uh they 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 were in church and we saw them and and and, and I've experienced some folks that uh boy this person they're just hot you know on fire and they look like they're doing everything for the lord and not not that you're judging you know or anything but 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 I've, you have weakness folks i don't know if you have but i have seen individuals that ah uh, they just look unstoppable and then all of a sudden you don't see them anymore until you hear that oh it's oh, such and such a one you know, it seemed that they have gone back into the world and they have gone to do so and so and so on and so forth. Understand that that was not something that happened overnight. The enemy was in ambush mode. And for whatever reason, he, the devil was always seeking 
and studying and looking at the opportunity to, to enable to strike. And he, he choreographs the strategy in order to take out the individual. This is why the Bible talks about the fact that it is of the mercies of the Lord why we are not consumed. Consumed both by the things of life and the enemy its, itself. The enemy himself. Because he's always lying in wait. So that's one of the, the nature of the lion. The lion is an ambush predator. He will, he will wait patiently for the right opportunity to strike. They move carefully within striking distance. Uh, the final charge is usually less than 50 meters. Any further and the lion will overheat. The lion is a, is, is a very uh, good conservator of, of energy. Because the he he the, the power that the lion has is 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 short circuited by having to overly ex, 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 exert himself in 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 the catch of a prey. So 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 generally, what happens then is that. The lion will always be sneaking up, putting himself in position, watching your every move, studying your move, and then he will always put himself in that position so that when the strike is to take place, it is sharp, it is quick. But that may not be something that took place in 15 minutes. That may have been the entire day he was stalking. Experts have observed individuals, lions that is, stalking under veget vegetative cover, occasionally sticking their heads high up out of the cover to keep track of a particular animal. They may be stalking in the process, though they do sometimes give themselves away inadvertently. So, so we have the layout of the ambush predator. Uh, and that's how the lion hunts. The, 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 the next interesting thing about the lion is that he is a predator of darkness. A predator of darkness. And what do they mean by that? Most hunting done by lions is under the cover of darkness. In the gloom of an African night, they can easily observe and stalk their prey without the threat of detection. You see, the, the, the lion knows, and, and, and one of the deficiencies of, of a lion, and we will get to that in their characteristic, is that they don't use many of their senses to in order to hunt but visual so 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 they rely on their power but it is more from a visual perspective and so this is why for for them strategy is important this is why the the the, the devil says uh, when he presented himself that he's walking to and fro up and down he is he is constantly on the path because in order for him to create chaos he has to be observant of our practices he has to be observant of of the things we do and the only way to do that is to observe us from a distance so, so the enemy is observing our, our Bible life. He's observing our prayer life. He's observing our, our fellowship life. He's observing our church life. And he, he puts together a plan. He peeks up every now and then from time to time to see if we are doing the same routine, if we're operating in the same environment, if we are, if we are, 
uh, at the same level. He peeks up from time to time and he looks at our development and, oh, okay, he's, he's always at this point. He's, he's constantly at this point so I can strategize. There is nothing that the enemy is going to do to us that to some extent we ourselves won't be a contributor to his attack. That's that that's that's basically what the Bible is saying. The, the, it, it it how much of of how much of the the the, the pressure we be, we come under from the hands of the enemy has a lot to do with our, what our practices are. Because the enemy like the lion is stalking us. And he does it under the cover of darkness. He, he, he does it under the, the, the panoply of, of obscurity. So, so there are some times when we don't see it with our spiritual eyes. But if our eyes was open, you would see, uh-uh, that's the plan of the enemy right there. Uh-uh, that's the plan of the enemy right there. I, I need to watch how I respond. I need to watch what I say. I need to watch how I react. I need to watch what I do because uh, that's the plan of the enemy. Right? He is stalking and doing it under the cover of darkness. This is why the Bible talks about men rather darkness than light because it is a characteristic of evil and a characteristic of, of evil behavior. Uh, why does the thief operate at night? Because he believes he can use the cloak of darkness as a, as a, as a, as a strategy to his advantage to catch us unawares. Because that's the end, that's the entire gambit of the enemy. The enemy knows that if you see him, you can react. So the only way for the enemy to try to get an advantage on you is to catch you unawares. And, 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 and what does that mean for us from the spiritual perspective? Is that spiritually, we have to be spiritually alert. spiritually awake so he operates under the cover of darkness in the gloom he says uh, of the african night now they can easily observe and stop their prey without the threat of detection uh it actual it's actually quite common for lions to sit and observe their prey during daylight hours usually just before sunset but they mostly wait until after dark before launching an attack. I, I used to remember um, when uh, we used to go to the zoo in Jamaica. And God bless, I know, don't know what the zoo is like now. But one of our, uh, you know, one of your, 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 your expected, your, your, your anticipatory um, events in going to the zoo is to see the lion. Uh, and whenever we came up to the lion, uh, the lion seemed to always be sleeping. Uh, and it was such a uh, it was such a disappointment that uh, almost every time you went to the zoo, uh, that this lion is just sleep. What the laziest lion I've ever seen! Uh, you know, what, I don't know. How come Hope Zoo get the laziest lions? Because the lions are sleeping. But really and truly, that's a part of the nature of the lion, especially the, the male lions. Uh, they, 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 they sleep a lot because during the daytime uh, is when all that food is being digested. And when it is being digested, uh, they just lounge around and sleep. Because as you just saw, a lot of their, by instinct, their nature is to, is to attack under the cover of darkness. And they wait until uh, they will start their prey all day. And wait until 
the night comes in order to do their attack. Have you sometimes, you know, uh, fr from the spiritual perspective now, uh, ever noticed that sometimes it seems after things been just going and things seem very, very calm, all of a sudden there is there is a something upheaval just happens uh, after a long period of what seemingly is just calmness, seemingly it's just things going all right. All of a sudden, something just occurs out of the blue. It's the strategy of the enemy. The strategy of the enemy is to is is to take you off guard with that false sense of security that everything seems to be calm. And, and and when you think that uh, the Bible talks about when we think peace and safety, sudden destruction, sudden it may it might seem like sudden destruction, but be, believe it, brethren, that behind that suddenness, the enemy has been strategizing. So similarly, it says, if the landscape is illuminated by bright moonlight, they wait until it's obscured before attempting any sort of hunt. Which means that the, the, the lion is using the, the, the cover of darkness, the cover of, of, of shadow. To, to, to launch his attack. No wonder David spoke about, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow. Because as the sun is in the, as he goes into the valley and there's the, 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 the move of the sun, it is casting the shadow, the shadow of darkness as you go through the valley. And so it becomes a valley of the shadow of that it, it is it is it is an impending kind of darkness where there is no sunlight and that's why whenever there is mention of sunlight in the bible and even sunlight in 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 our daily uh, expression sunlight is often seen as a, a kind of antidote there's like when we talk about shining the sunlight on certain situations, we shine the light on 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 the we illuminate our circumstances. Uh, the, the way we think can become a, a cover of darkness. The, the the mindset that we operate with can become a cover of darkness. The 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 things that we entertain in our minds and in our hearts can become the cover of darkness. And it is in that cover of darkness that the enemy likes to operate. And so we have to be uh, always be, 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 be cognizant and ready to shine the light in our circumstances. Uh, they, they talk about the light has come. That's why I talk about you you can't hide your light under a bushel uh there there is an there there is a has to be a certain amount of luminance around us luminance because the devil doesn't like when this light is on when the light is on he's easily seen when the light is on the enemy's plan becomes clear in your mind when the light is on then uh, the, the plans, it's it's like when you've been enlightened to what they, is really that them saying about you. Is really that they're saying about that that sort of illuminance when the enemy makes it, when 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 when, the, when, when God causes the plan of the enemy to become from come to light, you know how to operate. Because thank God. He, he caused them to do something in order to expose themselves. Because if they didn't expose themselves, we would have walked right into the trap of the enemy. And this is why we, we, we have to always be, be covered in the word and covered by God and covered in the in 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 his in his mindset and what God wants us, how he wants us to walk. Because unless this mind of the spirit enlightens our spirit, 
we can walk right into the darkness unawares and that is where the enemy likes to strike thank god that sometimes he opened our mindset and he sometimes he caused certain situations to just happen and you know it was not you. You know it was not anything you planned. God just caused this thing to happen that you became enlightened because the enemy was setting to operate under the cover of darkness. So the lion is a predator of darkness. He likes to utilize the shadow of the night because it enables him to see you better than you can see him. Generally, lions hunt only what they can see. And what do we mean by that? I, 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 I expressed in a, uh, earlier on that the lion doesn't use a lot of his other senses, like the sense of smell or, or you know, or the sense of, of sound and all of those things in order to, to necessarily hunt. He hunts by visual. This is why the devil has to be constantly walking up and down and, and to and fro. Because unless he sees what's going on, unless he has some visual as, as to what's going on, he cannot know how to formulate his strategy. He does not have that mindset, that, that, that omnipresence. He does not have that omnipresence like our almighty God. He may be spiritual, yes, but he does not have omnipresence where he can be at all places at all times like, like the God we serve. And so he has to constantly be up and down because he needs to see what's going on. So lions hunt primarily only based on what they can see. This is why they are stalkers. This is why they are ambush predators. This is why they will take their time and, and line weight at the edge of a burrow or the, 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 the mouth of a burrow for the war hog to come up so that they can grab him because they are not hunting based on, on, on other senses. And some other animals can operate based on other senses, sense of smell, uh, sense of sound. They only hunt based on what they can see. And what are the things that they hunt? Zebras, antelopes, gazelles. They do, they do though also have a fondness for warthogs and have been known to lie in wait outside their burrows for hours on end. They also target other large animals such as buffaloes and giraffes. And from the spiritual perspective, what does that tell us? It tells us that the, the, the devil is not afraid of the bishop, not afraid of the deacon, not afraid of the pastor, not afraid of the saint, not afraid of the person who just get baptized this morning. There is no one that is excused from the hunt because all he needs is for any one of those individuals to leave themselves vulnerable and the enemy will strike. Notice all animals we just named out just now. A lot of those animals are even more large in size in comparison to the lion. But the lion has a particular kind of strength 
that he will utilize those strengths to his advantage against animals that are even three, four times its size. One of the one of the the the, the, the we saw that stalking nature. We also saw that lying in wait nature and the observant of the observing of the 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 attitudes and the, the usuals. I mean, the, the devil not likes nothing more to do than to study our habits. He likes to study how we operate, when we operate, oh, 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 when our minds go into relax mode, when our minds go into that uh, ease in Zion mode. He he likes to study our behavior, our, our, our attributes of, of, of how we react and our body language. Look here, the devil is a art at his craft because he is intent on embarrassing us before Almighty God. So, so, so it doesn't matter the size of the enemy. One of the, 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 one of the characteristics of the lion is that when he catches an animal that is bigger than it, itself, he will bite on its throat or, or, or muzzle the throat or throttle it. When you see the word throttle there, it just means that he is choking or strangling the prey. And, and if you watch some of those documentaries, uh, I've seen where uh, the, the, the lion just wants to get to your throat. And once he gets to the throat, he will hang on to that throat for, for, for hours until the life slowly, slowly drains out of you until there is nothing left and you, there is no more resistance. And that is how the, the, the enemy operates from the spiritual pers perspective. He, he likes to wear us down and he will wear you down and wear, you know, when I think about it, I think about, uh, you know, uh, you know, there are some guys who, when they are going after a, a lady, the lady don't like them, you know, lady, the lady don't, I mean, I mean, yeah, I've seen classic examples. So I'm just speaking as I'm led and I'm, I'm calling, you know, I'm just calling to mind examples of, of, of situations you've heard about and seen where, the, the, the lady wouldn't even give the guy the time of day, but because of the persistence, because of the constant wearing down, the, the, the determination of the man was just there wearing and wearing and wearing until finally she just gave in to having a relationship. It is in the same context that the devil operates. He will, he will just, he will just hold you at that spiritual throat. Hold you. He will, he will always just try to hold that one situation over you. Hold that one situation and hold it against you. Hold it, hold it until he just takes the life out of you. That is the, the, the nature of the lion. Especially if the if the the prey is a larger in size, it's a short sprint. Remember, they're not going to be running you down for any long time, and that's why the Bible talks about they that wait on the Lord shall renew their their strength. They shall mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not faint. What the devil is is counting on is that at some point during your running, you're going to just drop and collapse or tired or, or just or, or just stop. So boy, I can't bother with this Christian thing anymore. I can't bother with believing. I can't bother with serving. I've been waiting on the Lord for so long for things to happen in my life and nothing not happening. Uh, might as well me just give up. The devil, has just, he just, he's just waiting and pray and just, and just, he will hold out. 
And so that's why we have to ask God, Lord, help me, irrespective of what I'm going through, to have the patience to wait. Help me, irrespective of what I'm going through, not to turn around, not to go back into the world. Is Lord, help me, irrespective of how, how, where my life is going and what is happening, because I don't want the enemy to take me by this road. And to suffocate the spiritual life out of me. Because the enemy is always seeking for a way as to how to drain the life out of us. If he could do it when you went through the divorce, he would, he would have drained the life out of you. If he did it. When the people turn their backs on you, then he, he would have drained the life out of you. If he could have done it when, when it seems as if all hell was breaking loose and you lost that job and it seems as if you don't know where your next help is coming from, he would have drained the very life out of you. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his strength that has been keeping you alive. Thank you, Jesus. I, I just feel like giving God some praise because I am not here because of, of my own strength. I'm not here because of any good goodness in my entire, my entire being. It is because the mercy of God keeps me running. It keeps me walking. It keeps me believing. And you need to thank God too that he has kept you believing. He has, uh, because the devil just wants to see you give up. If you notice sometimes in the struggle, in the struggle, uh, if you watch those documentaries of the lion, when he holds on to the neck of the prey, sometimes he, he himself is not moving, but he's hanging on. And, and every time the, the prey starts to move, he, he tries to reposition himself but one thing he's not doing is not letting go of that neck. Because the, the enemy just wants one place to hold on to. That he thinks he can suck the very spiritual life out of you. And he will hold on until you give up the ghost. And that's why we have to cover ourselves under the blood of Jesus. Cover ourselves under the, the word of God. Cover our minds under the, 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 the spiritual helmet of salvation because the enemy is always seeking for an opportunity. Oh my God. Cover us, Jesus. Cover our minds. Cover our strength. Cover our bodies. Oh, cover our house. To, to, to throttle it. The lion's roar is territorial. And so this is something that, I, you know, I've, I've, I've found this so interesting because growing up, growing up when you would read this very scripture and maybe you have fallen victim to the, to the entire thing as much as uh, I, I have, uh, but but you focus on the roar. You know, when you read the scripture, it says the roaring lion, the devil like a roaring lion. And so you focus on the roar. But when you think about it, brethren, there's nothing about the roar that is when the enemy is going to attack. It is in silence. It is in strategy. It is in the cover of darkness. The, the devil isn't roaring when he's coming at you. The roaring is simply a territorial expression of the enemy. What the, when the enemy is roaring, he roars at dusk or he roars in the evening. The, the lion's roar is, territor is a territorial display that can be heard for at least five kilometers away. Lions are able to count the number of individuals in a roaring group and will challenge the invaders if they safely outnumber them. The enemy's roar is a territorial expression trying to say that this is my territory. 
this is the, the, in, the environment in which I'm operating. But what you notice about the roar and the, and the jungle, nonetheless, nonetheless, because other animals in the, the, in the jungle become so used to when the lion roars, they operate in a sense that is still nonchalant. They operate in their usual in their usual characteristic ways and not understand that there may be an enemy that is lurking and some animals still get caught. So even though there is a roar because, because of the complacency the complacency of how we operate, the complacency of how we look at life, the complacency with which we, 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 we take where we are going, we still become vulnerable to the cover of darkness, the ambush of the lion. So we have to be so very aware because what is the spiritual significance of the lion's hunt? The words express the relentless energy of the wicked one. He cannot touch those who are kept by the power of God through faith, faith unto salvation. But he walketh about looking eagerly after any lost sheep that may have wandered from the fold. He roars in the craving of his heart for prey like a hungry lion seeking whom he may devour. And the word devour simply from the Greek means to drink down, to, to, to gulp the end. It's like, you're, it's like you take a bottle to your head and you don't stop until the entire thing finish. To drink down, to devour, to swallow up. This, this is why one of the one of the one of the characteristics of of the enemy is having overwhelming situations. No wonder the songwriter talks about when my heart is overwhelmed, because when you are overwhelmed, it is a place where the enemy is trying to swallow you up, swallow you up in depression, swallow you up with weakness, because the, 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 the entire targeting of this is your faith, my faith. He is targeting our belief system. He is targeting the words that we have said about how we feel about our God and what we know about our God. He is targeting that faith relationship and trying to see, all right, then let me see if this is really you. This is why Job had to go through what he had to go through. This is why uh, there are some situations that the, uh, the Peter talked about the fiery trials that seem to like some strange thing has come upon you because the devil is always trying to swallow you up. But I remember uh, a particular uh, a favorite bishop of mine said, uh, well, uh, he is seeking whom he may devour. Because he does not have permission to devour everybody. He cannot devour everybody. That is why he's always seeking whom he may devour. And he says that uh, you can't swallow me, devil, because I'll give you indigestion. Uh, I, I have too much of the word in me. You're just going to have to cough me up. Too much of God in me. You're just going to have to cough me up. Too much of God all over me. Too much of the, the, the word of God. I've proven him too many times for you to try to swallow me, devil. I've, I've seen the work of the Lord too many times in my life 
for you to try to overwhelm me with this situation, devil. I've seen the, the, the miraculous move of God so many times, too many times for you to try to swallow me up with this darkness. And so I keep on proclaiming the word that I will live. I will survive. I shall not die, but live and declare. Live and see the promise of God in my life. Live and see what God has purposed in me. Live to see some things turn around by the mercy and the power of Almighty God. I will not lay myself prey to the ambush. And so this is why Peter talks about being sober being vigilant because what the devil likes to do he likes to break up the, the he likes to break up the fold if you notice when the lion is as when he begins the attack when he begins the strike sometimes he begins to strike and and all the animals are in in one grouping and as they begin to scatter here there everywhere there is always one that is the weakest of the weakest that is running in the wrong direction. And when the, when the lion zooms in on that one going in the wrong direction, you just know they're as good as dead. The, the, the devil operates in the same fashion. This is why when the Bible talks about th those that spread discord and those that, that, that come in and try to scatter and try to, to, to mess up situations where God is bringing and pulling people together and God is, is trying to fester a, a, a certain level of, of, of relation and fellowship. There are individuals that come in the midst with the wrong agenda. They're like lions after the prey. And so we have to guard ourselves, brethren. We have to guard ourselves, guard our minds, because the lion is always on the hunt. I hope that something that we have just spoken about tonight will encourage you to know that you, you have all the spiritual awareness. You are covered. And so it, it, all of our discussions comes back to one of the, the points we were making in session one. Is that we know who we are. We know whose we are. And we know what we have been purposed to do. When we know those three things. It makes us spiritually aware. It makes us more alert to our, in, to our circumstances. And understand that being alert to the enemy doesn't mean that you're always going to, you of your own accord will see from which angle the enemy is coming. But because you're so in the word and you're so, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have committed your keeping to the keeping care of God. He that keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep. It is, it is on that premise that we are able to know when and where the enemy may be coming from. It is because God is not sleeping that he awakens our spiritual mind and our spiritual uh, faculties to know what is being done over here, what is being done over here. And not only to know what is being done, but to provide an answer and a way out. I just want to give God glory and thanks tonight. Because I know the God we serve is a keeping God. The God we serve, despite all of these attributes of the enemy, the God we serve is greater. And that is why he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, including the devil. And so therefore, we do not operate in fear. 
we do not operate in 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 that lack of 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 feeling uh powerless but we know that through the power of god we are able to survive in an evil world heavenly father lord god i just want to bless you tonight thank you for your words thank you lord god for your for your keeping care lord i just want to thank you because like David spoke about the shepherd. You are our shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep. The sheep in and of itself is so vulnerable to the wolves and to the lions and to the bear. But you are the good shepherd. You are the one that keeps us from the ambush. You are the one that keeps us from uh, going through that cover of darkness in the midst, even if we are going through periods of darkness. You are the light, glory to God, that covers us. We just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to bless you. Lord God, open our minds spiritually. Open our thoughts intellectually and spiritually. Open our understanding cognitively. Open our mindset, Lord God. Illuminate our spirits so that we are able, Lord God, to be wise, Lord, wiser than even the strategies of the enemy, and to know, Lord, that we are covered by you. We bless you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' almighty name we pray. Amen.